everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is the next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 433. Oh, this is a Simply Defined YouTube. It is the January collection of Simply Defined and it's all about spring. I know we're still in winter, but we're all looking forward to spring, right? <laughs> So, I have got a technique-based class for you that I'm hoping, I'm hoping some of you are going to be like, oh, did she really just do that? And I'm like, uh-huh, we really did. Well, others of you, others of you may have seen this technique before, but you're like, oh, I forgot about that. And that works too. We're really not going to be making much, but I'm going to be taking you through step after step showing you from the very, very beginning. So for the very newest crafters, you're not gonna be left out. I'm gonna start at the very beginning and we're gonna get more and more technique-y as we go along. And hopefully at the very end, you're like, oh! <laughs> or at the very your least, you're like, hmm, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> So I have winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. Now, if you want to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, and we pick two winners every week and they receive a $25 gift card to their online account, you have to subscribe to our channel. So I'm asking you to please, there's a little heart over here with an SMS. I'm just asking you to please hit that heart and subscribe to our channel. We would so greatly appreciate it and would love to have you as part of the family. Once you've done that, you can leave a comment below down below. And once that comment is approved because it will not show immediately, we have to approve it, then you go into the running to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And who doesn't want a $25 gift card, right? Free is free. Now, these two lovely ladies, because sometimes we have lovely gents, <laughs> these two lovely ladies posted a comment. It was approved, which meant it was kind, it was polite, it was nice, it was something that anybody would read and not be offended by. <laughs> they had their comments approved and are now going to be doing the winner winner chicken dinner dance. Are you ready to see if it is you? All right, our first winner winner is Kathleen. Kathleen DeSanto. Kathleen DeSanto, is that you? If it is Kathleen, wahoo kachu. You are a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and have just won a $25 gift card. Congratulations. But you are not alone. Oh no, there's always two. Our second winner, winner is Ramona. Hello, Ramona. How are you? Ramona Mendez. Oh, congratulations, Ramona Mendez. Yay. Are you standing up? Are you jumping for joy? Are you saying, I don't believe it. It's me. Yes. Yes, <laughs> you and Kathleen, congratulations. So like I mentioned, we have to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. And Kathleen and Ramona, I fully expect you to stand up and dance with me. I cannot stand up because we are <laughs> technology challenged and I'm my own camera person. So I literally have to move the camera down. I don't have overheads and all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna sit here and do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance, but you, you two lovely ladies are gonna stand up and rock with me. Are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, kachu for you. Congratulations to the both of you. You don't have to do anything. That $25 is already in your online account. All you have to do is find something that makes your heart happy and buy it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> All right. So today, today I have got Simply Defined dies, and earlier I told you that I was going to be doing a YouTube with the Sizzix crease pad, and Sizzix has a limited number of crease pads. I locked them all up. They will be getting more, but it won't be until the end of February. So I locked up all the inventory that they had <laughs> and said, can you hold them for me, please? And this is the class where I really focus on them. But of course, we're going to start out simple and, and just easy and, and that way somebody who is new doesn't feel like we just jumped right into something so technique -y. they don't know how we got there. We're gonna take it step by step by step, which is why this is a full length technique-based crafting class. 
All right, I've got samples to show you. I also want to say, okay, anybody going to D23? <laughs> That's Disney's convention. I was online. I feel your pain. <laughs> so when SMS has like the warehouse sale and you all are like waiting, waiting, waiting for it to get online and then trying to check out, I feel you. I, I do. Yesterday I was online trying to get D23 tickets and it, it, you couldn't, you got into a virtual queue at noon and I had logged in and I was ready to go. And when the virtual queue came up, it tells you where you are in line. I was 7,932. So there was 7,931 people in front of me to try and get D23 tickets, which is the Disney convention held in September. I did get tickets for Mr. SMS and I, and we're going because it's our anniversary. It falls right on our 27th anniversary and we are huge Disney fans. So if any of you are going to D23, yes, Leslie, I know you're going to D23. I'll see you there. <laughs> but if anybody else is going to D23, let me know. <laughs> we'll stop and say, hey. <laughs> but I just needed you to know. I feel for, I, I understand what it's like. It's like the pressure, the stress. It was, it was too much. <laughs> but then I got the tickets and I was excited. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to tilt on down. I'm going to show you some samples and we are going to get started for today. Are you ready? Down we go. <laughs> okay, let's go down and let's start zooming in. Uh, zoom, 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 zoom. And down, no, too far down, zoom, zoom, zoom. I feel my, zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let me just turn on my, I thought I had my timer going. Let's, there we go. All right, you guys, so samples. Look at how cute is this, right? Darling, hello. <laughs> this is a simply defined die. Now you don't have to have the chickies. I'll show you that in a little bit. Sample number one. Sample number two. And <laughs> look at how cute is this? <laughs> that just makes my heart happy. So they're Easter related, spring related. They're not all Easter because obviously this one doesn't have anything Easter related. Then you can modify some of them so they have no Easter at all and you can add to others so they are Easter. Let me put these where, back where they belong. Uh, this one is Elena and Doris and Elena. All right, so are you ready to get started for today? I just feel like, so my hands are here. I'm going to turn this just a little bit and see. I think that's better. Okay, so what are we going to start with? Well, I'm going to show you the six dies. There's actually seven dies in this collection, but the I Want It All is comprised of six dies, and they are a full A2 size, so A2 for an A2 card. When you buy them individually, their value priced at just $13.99, which is a smoking hot price. But when you do the I want it all of the six dies I'm gonna show you, it brings their price down to $9.99, which is even beyond. I mean, we really do try to keep crafting affordable. And yes, over the course of time, we have had price increases. We just have not passed them along to you. We're trying to keep it as affordable as we possibly can. So here is die number one. So cute, love that bunny. And here is die number two. So if you just love him, he's $13.99. Or if you love all of them, they are $9.99 on the I Want It All. And I always take up the extra space. See how there's extra room in there? I always try to fill the extra space because I'm paying for the metal regardless. So if I can fit more stuff in, I do my best to fit more stuff in. 
Like, look at this one. Look at the little chick. And see all this extra room? This is, that would have been metal that was just thrown away. So we fill, fill, fill. Even the little bellies, we put little Easter eggs in. My gosh, if you get the whole set, you're going to have Easter eggs in every size imaginable. And then here is the basket. And there's even Easter eggs with here in case you wanted to add eggs to that and make it an Easter basket. But you don't have to. And last but not least is my cute little kitty. And see, look at even smaller Easter eggs, but you don't have to. Butterflies, tiny little Easter eggs. <laughs> look at all. So you can mix and match all of the different elements from all of the different sets to make them work. So you've got the six sets that go for $59.99. It makes them about $9.98 each or $9.99 each. Or if you just love one of them, they're $13.99 a piece. But then I did say that there was, let's see, I want to do this one and then I'm going to do this one and then I might do that one. Okay. And then I did say that there was one extra die that is sold separately and is not part of the I Want It All bundle. And I did a religious die. I did it so that, well, you'll see the samples. So, so hopefully you can see him. And it says he is risen. You've got two crosses in there. So I'll sh the samples will show you where we've just put ribbon around the back cross, but then you've got the center cross as well. And this die on its own is $13.99. Okay, so that's the, those are the dies for, for this month, for January, but let's start crafting. What do we want to start with? We're going to start with basic die cutting. And let me get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Hello. It's amazing what happens when you put some glasses on. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm going to die cut this one out just to begin with, just so somebody who's never seen what die cutting is can understand what these metal plates do. And they are pretty magical, these metal plates. They are chemically etched metal, which means that they're run through a machine and, um, and a chemical will slowly eat away at the metal and etch in the design. There's no blade to them, so you can't hurt yourself with them. That also means you can't cut really thick material with it because, well, the die is only this thick. You can't cut leather. There's nothing there to go all the way that's thick enough to go all the way through the leather. But paper, absolutely. Fun foam, absolutely. There's lots of things that a chemically etched die will cut, also known as a wafer die because it is wafer thin. I'm going to be using a Sizzix Big Shot machine today. And we are going to start by just die cutting. Now, my dies tend to be very intricate. See how the design in there and see all the little bits and pieces that have to fall out? My dies need what's called a precision base plate, and I will show you that. This die, let's grab this die really quick. So this is the frame to the cross. Come on. This die, this die is not intricate at all. It's just a very simple outline shape. This die would not need a precision base plate. There's a world of difference between these two. Now there are some machines out there that have enough pressure to perhaps cut this without needing any extra help. A Sizzix Big Shot machine will want to use a precision base plate for this just to get all the dies or all the pieces cut out. Now if you order a Sizzix Big Shot machine, there is, you get a few pieces to it. It comes with the machine, which is right here. It comes with a base platform. It comes with a solo shim. And then it comes with two clear plates. Two. Now this one is not so clear anymore. It's because I've been cutting into it. It started out looking like glass. Beautiful, but it is plastic. Over time, your plates will become more and more cut into, and they may start to warp. But this is what you're gonna get when you buy a machine from, from Sizzix. The precision base plate is sold separately, and we have a bundle where you get the machine and a precision base plate for a really, really great price. It's like getting the precision base plate, I think, for free. So, I'm gonna start with just a basic piece of paper. Let's grab a piece of black paper. 
just a piece of black cardstock. And I'm going to be using my base platform, my solo shim, and typically if I was cutting woo, hello, if I was cutting this die here, I would use a clear plate on the bottom, the paper, the die, and a do not cut plate. So I would mark this as do not cut, which means you try to never cut into it and always have it looking pristine because when you send it through your Big Shot machine, having one plate that is always perfectly flat is a really nice thing to have. So if I did this, easy peasy. No, in fact, we'll just do it. No precision base plate needed. We'll roll it on through. Look at that, rolls through like butter. And voila, it's cut out my cross. But I'm doing something far more intricate. Way more intricate. <laughs> Lots of little pieces that need to come out. So for this, I need to use my precision base plate. And this is what it looks like. Directions on one side, chrome on the other. Okay, so instead of having, I'm still going to keep my base platform and my solo shim, but instead of putting a clear plate down like I did last time, I'm going to substitute that with my precision base plate. Metal facing up. Oh, there I am. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I have this tiny little viewfinder that I can see. <laughs> I don't have like a laptop or anything set up so I can watch. I have this little itty bitty viewfinder and I can see that I'm there. <laughs> In fact, I don't know if you guys can see, but anyway. So precision base plate is going to take the place of your bottom cut plate because it allows the die to kind of bite into that chrome better, making a better cut and getting all of those little pieces out at one time. If you have been using a die cutting machine and you're trying to do intricate dies and you're rolling it through back and forth and back and forth and it's still not cutting, you probably need a precision base plate. So I've put my die in, I've got it on my paper and I've kind of put it at a slight angle so that it's not parallel to the roller in my machine. If you put your die, which has a straight edge, parallel to your roller, when you send it through, you might get a Kathump. Now, it's not bad if you get a kathump. In fact, we'll try and get a kathump. It's not bad. It just can kind of um, worry you. It's not going to hurt your machine. It's not going to hurt your die. It just sounds bad. So I'm going to try and get a kathump. Usually it's on this side as I roll it through that I get the kathump. And I have put a my do not cut plate over the top. Now this is a ruby red glitter Sizzix cutting pad that was done specifically and exclusively for scrapbooking made simple. Guess what I found? <laughs> I found a couple boxes of these. <laughs> I was saving them for what I don't know. So I'm gonna put the ruby red cutting pads up back online. And when they're gone, they're gone. But we found a few boxes of them. Now I'm gonna roll it on through. I wanna make sure my plates are square. Roll it on through. Well, see, a little bit of creaks and cracks. It's okay. Send it, send it, and are you ready? Kathump. All right. It sounded bad, but it didn't hurt the die and it didn't hurt my machine. Now, I am going to rotate my die, and this time I'm just going to do a whole 180 degree because every machine has a sweet spot. Your rollers have a sweet spot. It makes no difference what kind of machine you own. Every machine has a sweet spot. Yours may be over on this side. You, somebody else's might be here. Mine might be in the center. And by just rotating the die, it gives the die an opportunity to hit that roller in a new and unique way, allowing it to cut. So if it didn't cut on the first pass, hopefully it cuts on the second pass. Let's see what we got. Oh, that looks pretty good. Can you see all the cuts in there? That looks pretty good. All right, so if things go well, everything's just gonna kind of fall out. And that's what these little bits and pieces are called. They're called fallouts. <laughs> 
we get very intricate with our terminology, very, you know, <laughs> in the crafting world. <laughs> no special name there. They fall out, so they're called fallouts. <laughs> All right. Come on. And there. Oh, Mr. SMS, my husband, this is his office. Let's see how close we get to the trash can. Well, there's all your little fallouts, all the little pieces that we don't need to keep. And here, a few more over there. Here is the beautiful die cut. Amazing that a die that has no real blades can cut paper like that. Look at how cute is he, right? So easy peasy mac and cheesy. Let's cut one more and let's do the little doggy. So let's do the little doggy. Oh, see, I hear it. Hmm. My little stabilizer hasn't been acting up for quite some time, but we took my camera in to have it looked at, and, well, <laughs> I don't know if, if it helped it or it hurt it. <laughs> we'll have to see. I'm actually taping this Friday morning. I tried to tape it all day Thursday, and um, my camera was just giving me issues, so I took a step back. Went home, <laughs> took a breath, and back here early this morning before we, before everybody gets in for work. Okay, so, got my little doggy. See, I hear it. <laughs> nope. Well, we're just going to go. Okay. Got my little doggy. He also needs a precision base plate. I've got my base plate. I've got my solo shim. I've got my precision base plate. Chrome facing you. If you can read the directions and you're about to send it through your machine, stop. Turn it over. <laughs> you wanna see the mirror image. I've got my paper. I've got my die at just a slight angle. And by putting it on a slight angle, I'm going to eliminate most of those loud creaks, cracks, and kathumps. Sound effects required, kathumps. <laughs> Make sure my plates are squared and let's send it on through. See, hardly any creaks and cracks except for I can hear my camera. Let's rotate it. Shh, be very, very quiet. <laughs> We're actually hunting rabbits. <laughs> okay, I probably just dated myself, but that's all right. Oh, there it is again. All right, so what do we got? The pieces are already starting to fall out. And right now I'm putting my dies right on my gotcha. This is a scrapbooking made simple exclusive. It's by, it's a Simply Refined product. One of my products, it is a magnet, holds everything. I mean, you can hold a ton of dies. Spellbinders made this for me. They originally came out with their little diamond magnet, but the magnet was, I mean, the diamond face was so small. And I said, I want something much bigger. So instead of just having it made, it was their idea. You shouldn't, you really shouldn't take somebody else's idea, if, you know. But so I worked with them to make this and Spellbinders actually manufactured this for me. And, um, much happier because the magnet is so much bigger and you can hold so much. You can also, if you lost something in the trash, amazing. So 
the gotcha tool. Now, if you do have a pacemaker, you certainly don't want to hold it up against you um, because it is, it is magnetized. So just keep that in mind. Let's see. Let's take out all the little bits and pieces out of my little doggy. And that is the benefit of a precision base plate. If you are using a big shot machine, a big kick machine, a vagabond machine. Now, a Big Shot Plus typically does not need a precision base plate, but the longer you have that Big Shot Plus, uh, the more you eventually may need it. it. All machines will loosen up over time, and you may have to shim a few things to get them to cut. It's just the nature of the machine. All right, so I think we're good enough there, yeah? I think I've got most of the little bits and pieces out. So all my fallouts are now trash. And let's see. Oh, that's a happy blue. Oh, maybe I should use, well, yes, I'll use it. Wait a minute, let me grab a piece of yellow. because we've got chickies in there. Okay, so there he is. All happily die cut out. Got a few little bits and pieces that are still in there that I need to pop out. But you're saying, oh, he's so cute, I just don't want those chickies. Okay, no problem, snip him out. And what about the one that's right here? There's a chickie right there in front. Not a problem. So. Let's just go zoop and zoop and we're going to cut him out here. Zoop and here and here and we'll take him off across the top here and here. Okay, chickies are now gone. But you're like, but there's still that little chickie in the front that I don't want. Okay, I get you. On all of the dies, we've included little bits of extras. This one comes with a basket that can just be a bowl. It can be a basket and it can have Easter eggs in it. This was done so you could put that little bowl right in front of that chickie if you didn't want a chickie there. You can just cover it up, absolutely. There's, oh, let's see, which one also has, there's a couple others that have little baskets or little little um, nests for Easter eggs, it's up to you. But you don't have to keep the die exactly the way the die is. You can absolutely then get rid of the chickies and away you go. So easy peasy die cutting. Now let's move into something a little more, um, a little more difficult, okay? And for that, I am going to use, hmm, I'm gonna use sticky dots. So what's a sticky dot? Sticky dots are hundreds of thousands of little micro dots on a sheet of paper. So one side has nothing, the liner, the other side has sticky dots. They're used for intricate, we usually use them for intricate die cutting. So if you wanted to stick him down, let's do this one, he's cute. If you wanted to stick him down on a piece of paper, I would put him right down, close this up, press, press, press. Anywhere you do not see the black outline, those sticky dots are going to remain. So you can use them again and again until all of them are gone on the sheet. Let's grab that pink piece of paper. Pull up. Pull this off. And instead of trying to use liquid glue to put it down, 
or a glue stick or this is a much cleaner easier way to do it. It is repositionable until it becomes permanent and just like that he right easy peasy that's what sticky dots do today we're going to use them a little differently I'm going to take a piece of and what do we want to use do we want to do the doggy I guess I could do the doggy maybe well I want to do the doggy with the chicky in it okay so I'm going to grab a piece of paper and we'll use white paper Although we don't have to, we could use any color I want. <laughs> Do we want a piece of light blue? No, nope, we'll use white. Okay, so I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to put some sticky dots on a sheet of paper. And we'll do this bunny. Come on. Oh, I hear the crew, the SMS crew getting in. All right, so I just need a paper as big as my die. Cut it down to size. And now I'm going to put sticky dots on this entire piece of paper. And you're like, you are? Why? Well, we are going to do easy peasy paper layering. So sticky dots on the entire piece of paper. And I'm just going to let it sit there for a minute while I run this through a my die cutting machine and cut my image out. Let's grab another piece of black paper. Looks good. Got my little glue dots on there, which then stick to my cutting plates. Let's see if I can get my little glue dots off. And bring over my machine. So here we go. Remember my sandwich, base plate, Solo shim, precision base plate, paper, die, kind of at an angle, cutting plate or do not cut plate, and send it on through. Yay. All right, let's rotate him. I'm just going to do a full rotation. I just totally just did a full rotation and let's send them on back okay let's see what we got oh yeah easy peasy Die there, all the little fallouts. And look at that. All my little pieces. So once I get all my little fallouts out, and with my dies, there tend to be a lot. I tend to have a lot of detail in them. Okay. Ta 
toss these all away. Let's bring back over my sticky dots with my sheet of white paper on it. Open it up. Take my white paper out. So now all the sticky dots right here, they're gone. They're onto my white paper. I don't know if I can get an angle of it where you can see, I mean, hundreds of thousands of little dots. I'm now going to take and put my die right on top. Oh, I still got one more little fallout. Right on top. And push them into place. Now eventually I'm going to cut him out. So if he's not centered on my white paper, I'm going to be just fine with that because he's eventually going to come out. I'm going to cut out the outside of him and get rid of this excess white, pa uh, white paper. So why did I do this? Because we're going to do some very easy paper piecing. What's paper piecing? Well, have you ever seen the dies? I know Tim Holtz does it a lot where he will cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and then layer the appropriate colors he wants in the appropriate places. Well, this just lets you do it so much faster and so much easier because the sticky is already there. So if I want to do this flower right here, all I have to do is decide what color paper I want. Let's use that pink that I had. And I can just cut that flower. And let's use that yellow. I'm going to cut the center. Keep those right there. So I'm going to take that pink piece of paper and where that single flower is. I'm, oh, that's a really big one. I can use, oh, oh well. I can use half that size. All right. So where that pink, where that flower is, I'm going to take that pink piece of paper and I'm going to die cut. Bring my machine on over, send it on through. Go forward. And since I'm only concerned about that one little piece, then I can immediately go backwards. And let's pull it out. See what we've got. There is my die cut. I can then take my tweezers, pop this off. center bring over bring over my frame my die that's on my sticky and pop out the pieces that I need that piece fits right there and they're already because there's already sticky there's already adhesive on my on my paper I don't have to worry about gluing anything I just pop them out and put them in. And you are paper piecing. Fast and easy. This is the quick way of doing it. Who wants to get wet glue out to try and do, that's my center, I'm gonna do that in a different color. Who wants to get out glue to try and do this? Not me. Sticky dots do so much. Okay. 
Okay. Do I need anything else in here? Uh, I don't think I do. And I have got my first layer. My first layer down. So let's do that center. I'm going to do the center in yellow. And I'm going to do that flower a little bit higher up here in yellow. And so I'm just going to cut them at the same time. Let's see if that gave me enough. So I'm going to do the center of the flower we just did. I'm going to do that in yellow. And I want to do the flower on top with that cute little bud in yellow. Gosh, I just should have cut a bigger piece and just done the whole thing. You think that'll cover it? Ooh, look it. Look it, look it, look it. That'll cover the whole thing. Wahoo could shoe. Bring over my machine. So you're just building a puzzle. You're putting the puzzle pieces back and they're already glued for you. You don't care about anything else except for those pieces you want in that color. Let's make sure I'm centered. There we go. Send it through. And then once you're sure it's passed the whole way, send it on back. And that's all you have to do. And you're not cutting the whole die. You just want the pieces you want. Woo, I popped. <laughs> Hope that the pieces that I, well, yeah, no. Okay, good, they didn't. All right, bring it back over. And I want the center. And then let's put my center on in. Nope, not that way. That way. Yay, now I've got a yellow center. And I also wanted my flower up in this area. So let's pop those pieces. That one's gonna go here. And you just layer them in and they stick right down. And this one's gonna go here. And I need this one here and that one there. This one here will go here. And I'm just filling in my puzzle. That's all I'm doing It's filling in my puzzle. there. I think I have this one. There we go. And then the bottoms of my flowers. So this one here. And so I've done some of the more intricate work. The bunny, the bunny would be easy peasy because he's so big. Last piece of my flower here. And in we go. Oh, and one more little one right there. One more little tiny one. So the tweezers I'm using are Ozzy Andrews tweezers. They've got a super fine tip on them. They're really well priced. 
So I can't get my tweezers anymore, so we've gone with Ozzy Andrews because his came as close to mine as possible. And poof, we're building color. Now what about the background? Well, that's easy to do as well. You don't do anything different. Let's pick a color. Let's take that pretty blue. And this time what I care about is the background color. So let's cut a piece. I think that's probably big enough. And I want to get this piece right there. And that's really all I'm looking for right now is that piece right there. So my paper's even bigger than I need it to be. As long as it covers what I want to cut, I'm ready to go. Bring it over. A little bit of an angle just so I don't get that thump. And send it on through. And I don't have to take it all the way to the end because there's no, there's no paper here. So there's nothing to cut. I just need to make sure that I cut. It goes through the roller to the end of that blue paper. And once it's done that, I can bring it right on back. Talk about a good way to use up all of your scraps. And just like any other puzzle, Oh, I should have gone down further. I need that piece too. Just like any other puzzle, you just start to build your color. I needed it to go just a little bit further down. <laughs> so where is it that I needed it to go? Let's get all of that out because we don't need it. I need it to go right there. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue. Let's get that lined in there better. So I have time to pick it up and reposition it. But once it becomes permanent, it becomes permanent. So I missed a little piece right here. That needs to be blue as well. And in there and in there, but I'm just gonna cut it and layer it in there. You could recut the whole piece if you really want to. Up to you. But it is just like a puzzle. Once it's through, bring it back, and then find the piece you want. The key to this whole thing is the sticky dots. Okay, let's find the piece that I need. It's right here. Okay. And I can just keep layering in until I'm happy with all my colors. Is it work? Yeah, paper piecing is work. There's no question about it. It can be, um, for some people, too much work. Um, for other people, it's a very good stress relaxer or de-stressor. They can sit in front of their TV and go and just do, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it over here because I'm going to grab some of these sticky dots so that top little piece sticks down so I don't have to cut it. See, I only needed a small little piece, but I don't want to cut it. So I just put sticky dots down on the top piece of it. 
so that when I layer it down, oh shush, not you. Did I get sticky dots on there? Do I have some sticky dots over here? Grab them. Let's try and layer that down so it sticks. There we go. There we go. Okay, so you can continue on. Like I said, is it time consuming? It can be. Does it look beautiful when it's done? Absolutely. Um, is there a faster way of doing it? No, not really. <laughs> The sticky dots is one of the fastest ways to do it because you don't have to add adhesive to anything. You're not peeling off a liner and trying to place it down. You just go. And then when you are all done, you just trim out. Nobody has to know how easy it was to start layering everything into that. Really cute, really fun. See, I took the I took it to a film. There's this store that does cameras for movie studios and things like that. And I wanted to look because, well, oh, my little piece came off. I wanted to look because, well, I wanted to look. But I had them take a look at my camera. I'm thinking that that might have been a mistake. Because now, well, it's going to be what it's going to be. Hopefully I can fix it. All right, so we're going to move on. So now you have seen, you've seen just basic die cutting, easy peasy die cutting, where's my sample, right here, easy peasy die cutting. You've seen that you don't have to keep the die exactly the way it is, you can eliminate elements to open it up if you don't want something on it if I didn't want the frame okay zoop. and zoop. now I don't have the frame you have options totally options he's darling without the frame no chicksies and no frames. In fact, I'm going to stick him down. Let's move these over there and these over there and that one right there. And let's just stick him down really quick. Grab my sticky dots. It teases me. I hear it going bzzz, but then when I go to settle it, it stops. It's like my children. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be hanging out playing on their games and they'll be doing something and I'll say quiet you know I want them to quiet down so I'll go walk to tell them to quiet down and by the time I get there they're quiet <laughs> it's like <laughs> okay so you saw I put it down I gave it a press anywhere that there is white that is showing through the sticky dots are going to stay there so you can use those later How cute is he? Ta-da! 
got rid of the frame, got rid of the chickies, and made a totally different looking die. All right, moving on, the crease pad. Let's talk about the crease pad, and let me bring mine over. This is a product of Sizzix, and here it is packaged. This is a crease pad. I call it a thud pad because at one time, the Sizzix crease pad, their, um, their, their silicone pad and their texture impression pad all were black and they all were just about the same size. So when I put them next to each other on camera, you couldn't tell the difference what was what, except for the squishy, I can squish it up in my hand, and the knock-knock plate, the, the texture there, the impression pad, if you hit it, it literally knock-knocks, but the crease pad, the crease pad's kind of malleable, and it kind of is a thud. It's not a real knock, it's kind of a thud. So this became the thud pad, and, and that's what I've called it ever since, and it really is called a crease pad. Um, However, if you if you look it up on our site, I think we probably used a keyword thud so you can find it. What is it meant for? What was its original intent? Well, if you have a die that has a score line anywhere in that die where you're supposed to score it, this will allow the score to happen. So this will not cut the die where that score line is, but it will score it and allow you to then have a, a score line in your paper so you can fold it. And that is what a crease pad is for. That's why they call it a crease pad. It's meant to put a crease wherever a die has a line that is not a cut line. And you can tell the difference between a, a cut line and a crease line. A cut line is is very high. You can It's much higher than a crease line. A crease line is just a very little line into the die you, it doesn't you can't feel it so much and it does put that line in there so you can score something i want to use it in a totally different way and again i don't watch other people's youtubes so i don't know if you've seen this last week or last year or five years ago but i thought i would show you again and to remind you or for those people who have never seen it what such an affordable tool, how it can completely change your dies. It will completely change them. And this is one of the, probably one of the most inexpensive items Sizzix sells <laughs> for a tool. This, the squishy and the knock knock. So we are gonna play with this today. Now to do this, ideally you need to have like either a two inch, um, roll of double-sided tape, a two and a half inch roll of double-sided tape, or a five or six inch roll of double-sided tape. That would be your ideal to use. And I'm going to go ahead and take it and I think I'll just go ahead and use the five inch for now. And I'm going to put it on a piece of white paper so I can get rid of my yellow and my pink for now and put that over there. And let's take it. Now this is Stacy tape. What is Stacy tape? Stacy tape is a double stick adhesive. It comes, I mean, this is a half inch. It comes all the way down to an eighth of an inch, all the way up to six inches. And every size in between. It is heat resistant. It is super strong, super long, and very, very affordable. It will hold beads. It will hold metal. It will hold fabric. It will hold paper. It will hold cork. It, there's really nothing that it won't hold. And a lot of ladies <laughs> will post on live chat or they'll send us an email that their husbands have found the Stacy tape and have, um, have confiscated it for their toolkit out in the garage because really this will hold just about anything. In fact, my little brush was coming, the little head was coming off. I took a piece of Stacy tape, wrapped it around, stuck this back in, and now I am good to go. It is that strong. So I'm going to take a piece of the five inch tape and I'm going to, it's 85 feet long, 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 long. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on my paper. Now you don't have to cut it. 
you can tear it. You can also score it if you would prefer. So I can take my scissors and I can just kind of go zoop. And that way, but I could have just torn it as well. You don't have to cut it, which makes it really nice when you're working with adhesive and you're trying to cut and you've got sticky off one side and, and it just makes it easier to be able to tear it. Now, I can leave this like this until forever, until I decide to tear off my sticky. It's perfect. I can, I can just make sheets of this for whenever I want to use it. Until I show the adhesive, while that liner is still on there, there's no harm. You can just make stacks of paper like this and keep it aside until you want to use them. But the minute I pull that liner off, I have to do something with it. Have to. So, and you're saying, well, why couldn't you use sticky dots for this? Well, I suppose you could. It's a little harder because of the liner. That That's the only issue is that it's a little harder with the liner. And I suppose we could take a piece and let me see. So if I put, let's see if I took, So I've cut a piece of my, my sticky dots. Let's open it up. Expose my dots. Put my dots down on my paper. Well, we can try. Let's see what we get. We'll do both. I'm I'm going to pull I'm going to pull this piece off and I'm going to put the liner back down. Cuz the only thing that doesn't stick to the sticky dots is the liner. So let's see. I might not have even needed to do that, but we'll do it both ways and see what we get. So I've got my Stacy tape ready to go. Let's grab a die. Let's use the Chicky die. He's so cute. Try to get off my little adhesive dots. Okay. So I've got my little chicky die. I have got a piece of white cardstock with a piece of Stacy tape over the top of it. This is where the crease pad comes in. Let's bring over my machine. And now typically you would say, oh, this is an intricate die. Look at all those flowers down there. I need to use my precision base plate. No, we do not want to use the precision base plate. We're going to take that and put that aside. We're going to use our crease pad. So now my sandwich is my base plate, my solo shim, my crease pad or thud pad is now my bottom plate, my paper, and my die at a slight angle because I'm going to cut it out when I'm all done and a do not cut plate center it all up we are going to try to achieve what's called a kiss cut what's a kiss cut it's where the die cuts through the top layer but does not cut all the way through the bottom layer so I want this this die to cut through the top layer of my Stacy tape, but I don't want it to cut all the way through that everything then 
falls out. So let's roll. And see what I've got. And we can roll back just for good measure. And let's see what I've got. Okay, so here's my die. You can see it's left the impression in there, but it did not cut all the way through the back. You're like, but why do you want to do that? Oh, there's really good reasons why I want to do that. And then just for good sake, let's see what happens if I do it on here. Let's just see. We can't hurt, it's only paper, right? This way I answer your questions. I didn't cut it quite long enough, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with it. And let's make sure I've squared it up and then let's send it on through. And it's a very easy roll. There's no pressure to it at all. You don't hear much out of the way of creaks and cracks. So now we've got, oh, see this one, stuck, stuck, stuck. Let's see if I can get it out and up. Okay, all right, we're still good. And again, it didn't cut through. Make sure it's down. All right, so let's start with the Stacy tape. And, hmm. <laughs> oh, here we go. So this one is and this one is That way, we know the difference. Okay? So now that I've got this cut, kiss cut, not cut all the way through, what am I going to do? Well, this is where I can start to play. This is where I can then take out pieces, just pieces of my design to expose the sticky. Can you see the difference there? I've taken, this is sticky right now. This is not, this is, this is not. And I wanna do that face the same color. Okay, so now let's take some gold glitter and just a little bit. Just a little bit. You can always add more. You'd rather use less because you can always add more than dump too much. And then I just take my finger and start to move it around. And if I need more, I add more. I would rather add than have too much that I can't put back. and I rub it on in with my finger. A little bit more on his head. And anywhere 
the sticky is exposed, the glitter is going to cling to. So anywhere the sticky is exposed, the glitter is going to cling to. Let's take off another piece. Um, oh, I've got a little piece right there that I missed that need to be that needs to be gold. Drop just a little drop because it's just a little piece. That's enough. And now that's gold. Let's take and do one of the the Easter eggs. So you've got the three. You've got one, two, three eggs. Let's expose those. So let's start with this one right here. And because it's a kiss cut, it's only going to pull the piece that I want the sticky to expose. So let's do that one in a purple. And let's drop a little bit of purple in there. And let's move it around with my finger. And that egg is now purple. And let's do this one. And let's make this one blue. And drop some blue. Now this is a little bit bigger egg, so I'm going to need a little bit more glitter. And now my egg is blue. And let's drop this one. Oh, I didn't mean to do an extra blue egg. Oh, well, it's blue. It's blue now. So as I pull my pieces out, I can go in there and color them individually. No other way of really doing this on a die unless you get a kiss cut. Now let's try this one because this is my this is my micro dots. And we're gonna do the same thing. So let's pull and see what we get. Okay, so the paper, the paper did not cut. So I can't pull individual pieces out because it did not cut all the way through the paper like it cut all the way through the liner. Different, different material handles different ways. So if you were thinking that you could possibly do this with micro dots, the liner doesn't want to pull. It wants to pull the whole thing. It doesn't have that waxy feel to it and that heft that allows it to kiss cut through. You saw me do them exactly the same and yet this one will not pull. So I can't get the little chicky out. I can't get my little egg just the little egg because I want to do that one in purple. I can't. It won't come out. It wants to pull the whole thing. And that's not what we're looking to do. So if I come back over here and I just start pulling my different things, let's do, um, let's do this flower right here. So I'm going to do this flower here. So I'm going to pull all of the little petals in my little flower off to the side all my little petals in my flower off to the side. And because it's kiss cut, 
it lets me just pull the individual petals out while leaving the the outline of the flower behind. And I've got this one here. And here. Okay, so I've got my flower pulled. Let's take some, let's take something bright. That's pretty bright, yeah? And let's just drizzle it right over. And so I've got a little bit of that color in there. And take my finger and wherever it's sticky, is where that color is going to stick to. Now looking at it, I can see, oh no, I missed a petal right there. Okay, no big deal, easy peasy, just go in and pull it out. I missed a petal right there. Okay, done. And I missed two little pieces right there. Okay, done. Just pull them right out. Oh, and I missed that one too, right there. So just because you miss a petal or you miss something, you just go back. You're able to see what you've missed. Let's put some down. Just a little bit. I've got little petals that I need to fill in. And now my flower looks more like a flower. So I could continue to just go on and on and on. Let's pull, um, let's pull these greens, okay? Let's just pull some of these, these greens. So that one and that one, that one. So I'm just taking some of these leaves right out. And anything that I leave behind that I didn't see, I can come back and get. And I'm just using my tweezers to go in there and pull out my pieces. Come on. All right, let's add some green and see what we get. Just a little bit and rub it right on in. And once I do that, again, I can see, oh, I missed, I missed a, I missed a leaf there and I missed a leaf here. You can see where the holes are and then you just go in and pull those pieces up. There's no mistakes here. There's no getting it wrong. It's that easy to do. It's so forgiving. Back down you go and this one and this one and it's all about using that crease pad okay so I've pulled a few more that I had missed and I've sprinkled just a little bit of glitter and then I go in and I fill them in. So I am building, I'm building, I'm painting with glitter. And you're like, okay, but I still don't see the image. Um, let's see, do I have, what do I have? Do I have, um, 
Gosh, I don't have a gold or a copper. Mm -mm. What do I want to do about his nose? Um, how about, oh, well, we'll do a little red beak. So I pulled his little beak out. A little bit of glitter. And this is the Stampendous Ultra Fine Glitter that I'm using. There, now he's, you can see his beak. So I'm not gonna finish this because we're gonna do this one more time. But I do wanna show you what happens when you pull the frame. So see, it's got the frame kiss cut all the way around it. So if I pull my frame, first off, it's gonna leave behind all the pieces that I didn't already pull up. All the flower details, Okay, and then you can use this. You can save this. You can, um, I don't know, alcohol ink on top of it or something. This is ready to go. Put this down on a piece of paper. Use it as a mask, whatever, but there's the dye. You can't use sticky dots to put this down because this is the liner. Nothing's going to stick to it. <laughs> so if you want to stick it down, you're going to have to use something with a wet adhesive to get it down. But you can use this. I, I Use it as a mask. Use it as a stencil. Now remember that black glitter I used last week? That black glitter that doesn't have any iridescence in it at all? Well, what if I drizzle some of it around? What if I just drizzle some of it around? I might need more. I don't know. I'm going to start with that. And then anywhere there's sticky, it's going to stick to. It's filling in the outline. Look at that. It's filling in the outline. Can you start by filling in the outline? Sure, if you want to. It really gives you a very clear indication of where, see, I still can pull all of these. Well, let me get all my black on and then we'll pull those. And it's only going to stick where there is an exposed adhesive, exposed sticky. I can gather it kind of all up. And kind of move it all over to make sure that I've got everything done and then brush it off and any place any place that still has white is sticky that I can pull up so I can still finish my flowers now I can clearly see my flower and what I need to pull up. So I can get rid of this one and I can get rid of this one and this one. And here. And 
and I can put in my glitter and finish this flower. Tweezers are going to be important because <laughs> you can't get the little kiss cut pieces out with anything but tweezers. And Ozzy Andrews tweezers are very, very fine tip and very, very sharp. Okay, I think I got them all out. Let's, I think I got all of them out of this one. Let's drizzle some glitter in there and see what we get. And maybe we'll use a very light, the light pink. A little bit of glitter on top. And done. And did I miss any? Yeah, I missed one down here and one right there. So all I have to do is go in, pull them out. Add a little glitter in those two places. And be done. Now you're saying, okay, but then what about, what about this? What about the background? Well, that's up to you. Do you wanna take paper? You could, you could take paper and cut the paper out and layer paper in here so you have a a paper background. Absolutely you could. You could take, let's take a piece of, um, oh, I don't know what I'm, or you could take glitter, sure. We could do it with glitter. What if I pull this piece out? Okay, I exposed that whole piece. And what if I use a little bit of a white iridescent? And I just move that glitter and fill in every place it's sticky. Oh, I blended into my black. should have burnished my black a little bit better but okay yeah should have burnished that black side better but that's okay so I didn't burnish my black side down enough I'm meaning I didn't take my finger and rub it into place because I was playing over here and not over here <laughs> and I added my white glitter and then it made a mess I got a little bit of black going on there. How do we fix that? Well, you can go back, grab a piece of paper, grab my little chicky die, not going to kiss cut so I don't want to use my crease pad and this time because that cut is so easy I'm not going to worry about using my precision base plate because all I want is that piece of blue right there that's all I want is that piece of blue right there no we're not going to throw it away we're going to fix it next time I should have burnished my black better I most often wait till the very last to do the black. That's me. Oh, and wouldn't you know it? All right, I needed the precision base plate because of that little edge, but we're just gonna run it through one more time. So we'll just put it on a slight angle. Oh, shush. Not you, my camera. See if I can get it out without having to use that precision base plate. 
So angle it there. Rotate and see if I can get it that way. And back. Oh, better. Now it pops out. That's what I want. I don't need anything else in here. This can all just be thrown away. I just needed that one little piece because we're going to fix my mistake because I don't like it that the black went into the clear. And now I would do this piece and here in the blue too. And poof, I've fixed it. Let's see if I can get it down with them. Really good press because I want to get as many of those sticky dots to transfer onto that. Layer it in. And it's like it never happened. Oh, look at how cute is he? Right? So darling. So cute. Okay, let's do this again one more time. Because we need to move on. This was with glitter. Let's do our kiss cut again. That looks really good. See, and then I can expose this and this and this, and that's all I need to do in the blue. No, don't do it. You've got things to do. Okay, I won't do it. I've got things to do. Okay. So that's me convincing myself not to finish it. <laughs> so we know we can't use sticky dots to do this because the liner just doesn't work. You can take, you know, two pieces or three pieces of... of uh, tape that are not quite as wide and put them together to be able to get the same thing or you use five or six inch Stacy tape. Now all double-sided adhesive is not the same. See I just tore it. Um, I can tell you that Elizabeth Crafts makes a great adhesive. Scorpel makes, uh, uses Sukwang adhesive and you know it's Sukwang because it says on the liner. Sukwang, 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 Sukwang. That's a great adhesive. Mine is a great adhesive. What you get from the Dollar Tree may not be and is not the same. Not all double-sided adhesives are the same. I can tell you Ozzy Andrew makes a double-sided adhesive and it's not quite the same as what I have. It's okay. It's not amazing. So we don't, we don't sell Ozzy Andrew as much as I love him. His adhesive is okay. <laughs> We want great, we want fabulous, we want amazing. So I'm gonna kiss cut this one more time because we need to move on. Bring my machine over. Remember that I need to use my base platform, my solo shim, my crease pad. So if you do not have a crease pad in your crafting arsenal, you need one because this is absolutely amazing put my paper down with my stacy tape face up because i'm not making a sticker if i put it face down and die cut then i am making a sticker i am trying to kiss cut so that i can pull up each individual piece of the die to color it individually to for all intents and purposes paint onto my die with now different mediums what do you mean different mediums? Well, ha ha. <laughs> Let's roll it through. And then back for good measure. I don't want it to cut all the way through. 
and that crease pad is what stops it from cutting all the way through and yet it adds enough pressure from the die to cut my liner. You can see the design in there. So let's start again. I'll go a little quicker this time. So let's take off my chicky. So cute. I love my chicky. There are the sirens. That makes it an SMS YouTube. Okay. And I'll do the gold again. This time I'll add a little bit more since he's got a very full, big tummy to cover. Okay, let's try that. I added a little bit more from the get-go. Oh, that seemed to be just about, just about the right amount. Always forget that one little piece right there. A little bit of gold. Okay, so my chickie is now done. Super fast, super easy. Let's do my little eggs. Do that one in maybe a pink glitter. Done. Let's do this one in a purple glitter. done. Could have used a little less purple than I did. But now let's use a different a different tool. Let's not use glitter. Let's do this big egg right here in embossing powder. Embossing powder? Um, yeah. So last week we had Stampendous's floral embossing powders and they all had pretty little glitters to them. All brand new colors. This week I'm bringing back, and you probably already have it, I'm bringing back their floral colors for embossing powder. None of these colors have glitter in them. This is her floral collection. And I didn't want to use embossing powders that have glitter because I'm using, well, glitter to glitter, right? So what if we took and we did that big egg in a blue. Take this this way so I can see it. So what if I did this big egg in a blue? Remember last week we discussed, we learned that Stacy tape is heat resistant. Maybe you don't want everything to be glittered. You could lay your paper in here instead of embossing powder. And that way you get, anytime you have a um, multitude of textures or of finishes, it gives different depth perception to your project. If everything is glittered, it's very woo, glittery. But if you've got some paper and some embossing powder and some glitter, it gives your eyes something else to look at and it gives more depth perception to your project by mixing up your mediums. Okay, I've got my embossing powder on there. Now all I have to do 
is take my heat tool. And because Stacy tape is heat resistant, it's not gonna bubble, it's not gonna burn. This is not, you can't use a blow dryer to do this. You need to use a heat tool. This is the Sizzix heat tool. Has two speeds. It's whichever one you're most comfortable with if you wanna start on low until you get comfortable using a heat tool. But this is a cylinder tool that lets you get close enough without burning. And I can go in there. and take my embossing powder from a powder to a solid. I think I need to go a little bit longer. Okay, so now I've thrown embossing powder down there. I've got two glitter eggs, I've got an embossing powder egg. What about his little beak? I've got a little orange. I can do his little beak and his little legs. So let's grab his beak and put some orange embossing powder in there. And how about his little feet? Or his little legs, should I do those in black? No, I'm gonna do them in orange. So his little legs. And just pop those little pieces out, throw down my orange embossing powder. Kind of rub it into where the adhesive is because it's gonna stick where the sticky is exposed. Now all I have to do is heat that. It won't take long because they're really small. And now I've added my orange embossing powder. You are painting with your mediums. What if I went in and I pulled out um, some of my flowers? So let's pull this one and just grab those little pieces and out they come. They've been kiss cut by the crease pad from Sizzix with a big shot machine, a big kick machine, a vagabond machine, a big shot plus machine. What are you using? Can you do this with somebody else's machine? Well, do they have a crease pad? You'd have to try it. I don't know. Okay, so I've got I've got my flower exposed. How about we use some yellow embossing powder? And I go in there and I drizzle it in. And I take my finger and I spread it into all of those open areas. Oh, and look at that. You can clearly see that I missed a petal. Great, let's just pull it out. Don't take my whole piece. Pull my petal, thank you. And let's see if we can put some of that, oh, I had enough embossing powder to fill that up. Throw on some heat. and watch it turn from a powder into a solid. Okay. 
all embossing powder is, is a finely ground up plastic. And when you heat plastic, what does it do? It melts. So if I want to make my flower here, maybe I don't want to use embossing powder. I want to have a couple different textures. So I do this one in glitter. Come on, little piece. There we go. And I just pull out all the little pieces. Once you get going, it goes so fast. And you can absolutely produce the same card again and again and again by doing the same area at the same time. So if I wanted to make five cards that kind of, that look like this, I would just mass produce them and do all of the Easter eggs at once and then come in and do all of the flowers that, you know, all the colors, the same colors at the same time. So when you're done, you've got five ready to go. Okay, let's see. I don't know if I've missed a piece. I might have, but I've now pulled this flower right here. And this time let's use glitter. And what glitter do we want to use? That's embossing powder. That's embossing powder. Um, how about the kind of burgundy-ish? Fuchsia. No, it's burgundy. Drizzle a little down. Move it around. I can clearly see that I missed one spot right there. See it? Pull it out. And let's see if I've got enough burgundy. To oh, I sure do. No reason to add any more. I had plenty. And now I've got embossing powder. I've got glitter. It's, it's anything you want to do. Let's go in and pull some of the leaves. And grab some of these out. You've got some of them. That little tiny one, out you go. And let's grab some green glitter. And in I go. And now I can clearly see what I still have to pull out. That's a flower. Well, yeah, that's a flower. We'll leave that to be a flower. So this one needs to come out. Come on. And this one. And here and there. And I can move my glitter around and start filling it in and just adding my green to it. And then I can come back in. I could cut a piece of black paper if I wanted to. And if I had the same image in black, I could pull up my liner and lay that black image in there on paper if that's what I wanted to do. That one back down 
and I think I pulled one more over here. Yeah, I did. I pulled one more, but that's okay. We're just going to go with it. Okay, so now I can add my black like I did before. I've got embossing powder down. I've got glitter down. In here so all of my detail comes up. My little chicky. Oh, too much, too much. Sorry, chicky. Oh, I didn't pull his black. Oh, come on. Pull it up. There we go. Okay, a little more embossing or a little more black glitter than I needed, but that's okay. That's wipe it off. Okay. So now I've used embossing powder, I've used glitter. And what if I wanted to use flakes? Flakes? Yeah, what if I wanted to use Sizzix flakes? Can I do that? Absolutely. Let's take off the backing. Let's make sure my glitter's down good. <laughs> oh, I lost that leaf. All right. Let's just make sure my glitter is down really good. Burnish, 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 and then let's pull off my backing. So now I've exposed my sticky right here. Can I get an image of it so you can see that? It's, oh, there you go. Totally exposed. Got to do something with it. What if I took some of my Sizzix metallic flakes? Okay, they come with this little lid. You want to keep this. It keeps everything contained. You do not want to use these with a ceiling fan going on or you don't want to sneeze. You want no air because these are, I mean, I just blew. I'm just blowing so lightly. These are as light as a feather and they go a really long way. I mean, a little bit will will go a really, really long way. A lot of people will take these and put them into a uh, Tupperware because they tend to grow. As they aerate, as more and more air gets in there, they will fluff up. You would be shocked if you put them into a Tupperware and just kind of shake them around. It's like they doubled in size because they are so condensed in there. They are so jam packed in there. And this is probably the best value for flakes I have ever seen. Ellison has the best pricing for their flakes. Truly they do. They only have three colors, but that's okay. The three colors they have, you can, you can blend the you can make blends out of the silver and the copper. You can make blends out of the gold and the silver, the gold and the copper, all three of them. So, I mean, three can get you more when you make blends, but for the price on these, they are amazing. Now I'm using a little stimple brush to adhere it to my sticky. And anywhere I have sticky showing,
my flakes are going to adhere to. A little goes a long way. And I will take these and move them around so that every little area that has exposed sticky has them. And then I can brush them off. And now I have put metallic, my gold flakes, behind it. It doesn't stick to the glitter. It doesn't stick to the embossing powder. Easy to do. Pull it off. Oh, I still use, yeah, silver. Hello. And a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. In fact, I'm going to put some of that back. That's too much. Come on, off you go. I don't need that much. Kind of press it down into the sticky and then kind of give it a little bit of a swirl and kind of move it where the sticky is showing. And before you know it, you've got metallic flakes on the back. So now we've used glitter, we've used embossing powder, we've used metallic flakes. All those different mediums, all those different feels, and they feel different, they look different. The embossing powder doesn't have any glitter to it. The, the flakes have that beautiful, beautiful metallic without being metallic. The gold is what is shiny and happy. And with that metallic on the back, it makes that little chicky just pop. He does, absolutely. And then when you're all said and done, you trim him out. When you're all said and done, you trim them out. So one more time just to be repetitive. And I know some of you already got it and you get the jest, but I also know that there's some of you out there going, okay, what did she do again? What did she do again? Let's talk about the most important part of the whole thing. And that is the crease pad. That is the key to it all. You take your paper, you take your tape, So you want to butt these up really good to each other because I'm using, I'm using, I'm piecing them together. I don't know if I did such a great job, but that's okay. And then, so you've only got a certain size. probably save that because I can use that somewhere as long as the liners on it it's good I take my die
base plate, solo shim, crease pad, thud pad, paper with the sticky tape on it, die, do not cut plate, send it through, Bring it back. If you're using 80 pound paper, you can send it through one more time. It's not going to hurt it. If you're using 100 pound paper, front and back is going to be sufficient. The paper is a little bit heavier, causes the kiss cut to be a little bit more clean. 80 pound paper though, no problem. And now you go in and you start to play. You may see a little line here and there by blend by putting your paper or you're doing your your um, smaller sections of Stacy tape. You may not. It's really going to depend upon what medium you're using. If you're using embossing powder, chances are you're not going to see any any line. So let's see. Pull this guy on up, and then let's pull this guy on up, and let's finish out his face. So I've got my, and you can see I've used three different, I took two inch tape and did it three times. Let's take some of my gold flakes. Less is more. I take my tweezers and kind of, in fact, that's probably right there is probably more than I need. So I've just got a little bit of flake on there. Let's kind of give it a press down and then huh well I can use a little more all right a little there a little there little there and maybe just a little bit there A super cute gold chicky. Do I want him a little more gold? A little big piece. There. Let's see if I press him in there. I'm using the little pieces that are all around. I don't want them to go to waste. I can't put the little pieces that have like blown away into my back into my jar, so I'm just adding them back on top and moving them on in. little gold chicky <laughs> and then let's use the copper let's use the copper for his beak and his little legs goes a long way. Let's try that for his beak. And it's 
stop clinging to me. And let's try that for his legs and see if we got enough. Because I got, I mean, I just have a little pieces. be so cute <laughs> do I wanna I mean it's it's really up to you do you want a golden Easter egg what color do you want your eggs go in there pull them up and start layering your color down let's do that one in this pretty kind of sea foamy green oh, get that oh well I suppose I could what if I put a couple little flecks of the, of the, okay, so I took a few of the little flecks of the, of the um, flakes that were just sitting here and embracing them. And then I put my glitter over the top of that. <laughs> okay <laughs> this is a little too much fun I could sit here and do this all day long I like the speckles what if I took a little bit of the silver because I've got a little bit of silver kind of and I just kind of speckled it and speckled it and little pieces here and I mean little pieces there Did... and dip do I have any more silver pieces anywhere floating around on my table do you see any I shouldn't be doing this. This didn't take too much time, but that's okay. It makes my heart happy. And I just put little pieces. See them? Now let's figure out what color glitter we want. go and go and go there's no right there's no wrong if you you can pull and color and paint and emboss I could use embossing powder for my entire back if I wanted to where's that really pretty is a really pretty ooh, let's use this blue this is from the floral collection and I could just throw my embossing powder down and move it oh I still had pink on my hands but that's okay fill that whole section in ideally without pink on your finger and then heat should we do the big side too? I'm 
move it around with your finger so you fill all the nooks and crannies in. Need to take this little piece off right there and we'll add a little bit more. Fill all the nooks and crannies in. It doesn't interfere with my gold. It doesn't interfere with my little glitter down there. Let's go here. And here. And here. there. Okay, we ready to give it a try? Let's emboss. All lids on, all lids on. Let's give it an emboss. And as I see it go from a powder to a solid, I'll move. So a little bit of a demarcation line where my tape is right there. Not much of one. And I can try to get rid of that by taking my embossing powder. Getting it a little warm. Throwing down a little more embossing powder. and just try to fill it up a little bit. Woo, Stacy! Woo, now I got a lot going on. I spilled, shh, and it blew. Yeah, I would go over it again. See, now you've got a beautiful high gloss. I do this part one more time. Only don't, don't spill like I did. Right over the top. Come in high so you don't blow it all away. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Easy to do didn't mess up my glitter, didn't mess up my foil. 
This guy was just glittered and we used a paper backing. This guy was glittered and embossed and foiled. And I haven't even put my black in there to get all the detail on my on my outlines. You have tons of options. The key the key to having all those options is this little thing right here. Crease pad. You may already have one and not know why you have it. <laughs> well, whatever the reason you have it, now now you have an amazing reason to use it. Think of all the dyes you have that now you can go in there and you can designate what color glitter you want where. All the masking's done for you. It's all done. All you gotta do is pull up the little extra pieces and put down your color. That's all you've got to do. Do you wanna put paper? Do you want some of them paper? Do you want some of them glitter? Do you want some of them flake? Do you want some of them embossing powder? Now it's all about the texture and the color. What texture do you want for the, for the individual piece, the individual element of your design? And what color do you want? Because if you don't have the color in the embossing powder, you might have the color in the cardstock. And if you don't have the color in the cardstock, you might have the color in the glitter. And if you don't have the color in the glitter, maybe you have a color in the flakes. You can do this. You've got this. All right, you guys, that was a lot. I agree. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing, but I really wanted you to see how amazing this can be with just that simple crease pad and how you're not limited to just glitter or just embossing powders or just flakes that you can incorporate all of them. So remember, we started way back here and then we went here and then, oh, I did this one earlier. This one's done in glitter with the flakes as my bait, as my, I went in with flakes as opposed to glitter and did the outline there. <laughs> and then I did this one. Okay, what is this? I haven't glued them down yet. This is the cross cut with Stacy tape. And then I, I flaked the whole thing and then I cut the top piece in the black to layer on. So I just took the cross. Put some Stacy tape down. Oh man, too short. Cross. Stacy tape. Die cutting machine. No crease pad. Cause I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to just get a kiss cut. I want that whole cross cut out. Cut plate, paper with the Stacy tape face up, cross. This is not an intricate cut, does not need a precision base plate. Send it on through. Send it on back for good measure. Peel off the sticky. You can use this as a mask somewhere else.
put some flakes down. You can see they're kind of blowing just by me talking. That, that's that's just me blowing and they're moving that much. So no air conditioning, no fan, no space heater that blows. Make sure you're able to cover the whole thing. You may need a few more flakes, you may not. are covered. And then I die cut out the top piece of that die. Just laid it right on top. Very easy, very cool. All right, so we did, we did a ton of stuff and I don't even know what I did with my little piece where I paper pieced him. It's gotta be here somewhere, right? We'll find it event, oh, maybe this is it. Oh yeah, remember all that time ago when we paper pieced him? <laughs> so you can paper piece him, you can kiss cut him and glitter him. We chopped up half of him and got rid of the frame and all of the little chickies. We just put him straight down. We had, we had a great time. Oodles of fun and lots to do. And again, it all got a We'll have to adhere that down, but it all starts with the crease pad. That's where you need to be. All right, so let me show you what's on sale, and then let me show you the samples. So the crease pad is obviously on a YouTube Yummy. We have limited stock, and so um, there'll be more coming in, but not until uh, the end of February is my understanding, and well, I'm hoping that these will be to you shortly by, you know, close to that time. Um, we have got, so in a lot of the samples, you're going to see this die here from Memory Box. So you get the bunnies, chicks, and eggs. So we've got this die on sale because it's on a lot of the samples. I've got the Stampendous Non-Glitter Floral Kit. So there's no glitter colors in this at all. This makes a lovely addition to the to the embossing powders we used last week, which were all glitter, and those were all florals. So these are gonna work beautifully with those, but for today, today they were just absolutely spot on, and you may already have those in your crafting arsenal. I've got the three Sizzix flakes. So we'll do an I want it all, and then open stock for you on those. We've got all of the Stampendous Glitter. Now you may have already purchased the black last week. So we have an I want it all and it'll include the black. So if you don't want the black, you'll have to buy colors that just make your heart happy or you may already have enough glitter in your stash to make it work. You want to use a micro or ultra fine. A fine glitter is going to be too, too chunky. But I think we have 24 colors of that, I think. And of course our sticky dots will always be on sale. We had to raise the price. They're now $10.99. I'm sorry. I kept it as low as I could for as long as I could. But you do get 10 sheets. So and they are they are much bigger than anybody. I think there's one other company who may have something like this, but they're smaller and a little bit more money. And then of course we have my dies. So 
part of the I want it all is your doggy and your bunny and you can see the extras that you get with each of them and the two dies I showed you already and then we have the kitty cat look at all the extras that come with the kitty cat which you can take those and use those up here and use these down there everything is meant to mix and match so you've got the kitty cat and then you've got my floral basket that can be an Easter basket but it doesn't have to be an Easter basket you can use the Easter eggs from all the different sets because you get so many different ones and you don't have to use the main dies at all if you just needed the Easter eggs so we've got those for you the last two part of the I want it all collection is the chicky that we use today with all the extras and the bunny that I paper pieced with the extras and then the last die which is sold on its own is the cross and that is the same as this one. All right, are you ready for samples? Me too. Let's start with Belinda. Hello, Belinda. Look at how cute. Isn't he so cute? And she just chopped him out. She, she literally cut him out of the main die to just use him. Used some different Easter eggs, used the Happy Easter she literally chopped him out. <laughs> and then we've got our bunny. And then she just did a couple basic in black and white. Just easy peasy. Doesn't have to have a whole lot of anything to look spectacular. She just did a couple in black and white. So that's Belinda. Then we have Claire. Isn't he so cute? And look at Claire's paper, paper piecing. Look at that. That's all paper pieced in. And hello, spring. I think this is the cat she has is fostering. She tried to make the color look like, I think that's the one. Hello, spring. And then we have our Easter basket or just a basket with flowers in it. It's what you make of it. And then look at our cute little bunny. Hello, bunny, isn't he so cute? And here's her chicky. Oh, and one more cat. Maybe this is the cat that she's fostering some kitty that she, <laughs> she says, oh, he's a very busy cat. <laughs> then we have Elena. And you've already seen Elena's chick. And her doggy. But look at her bunny. And he's so cute. And her cross. And her kitty cat. Her basket. And then her tall bunny. That is Elena. And last but not least, we have Doris. Wow. 
So this is Doris. And look at how, see, this is a perfect, I love this for a with sympathy card. Sometimes you need something religious and you want something religious. And I'm hoping that this speaks to you. If not, you'll let me know. <laughs> Look at her tag. <laughs> she fuzzy. She cut out the little bunny. She cut it. Look at it. And she's used the back. I mean, she just cut that die up and made it into something else. And then she's done the back. She took the die and spliced it and diced it and then layered it back down to what she wanted. <laughs> and look at her kitty cat. This is Doris. And her happy Easter. And her puppy. And again, Doris, she cut and chopped up and took individual pieces out of individual dyes. She cut the bunny out, she cut the chickie out, and then she made it her own. And this one has a tag, so I'm supposed to open it. Oh, there we go. And she took the chickie from the, is that the chickie from the head of the doggy? <laughs> so cute. And then last but not least from Doris. So she took the cross and draped her, draped her ribbon over it. All right, and then we do have a layout for you. So this is from SMS girl Elena. You've got the, she's chopped them off, so she's gotten rid of half of the frame on both of these so that she can make a pocket out of these dies. And then at the top, you've got your Easter cross. So right here, you've got your Easter cross. And this is from Elena. Beautiful colors, huh? Really pretty. So you've got the two pockets and the two places for photos. And that's from Elena. All right, you guys have no clue how long this is because I lost my timer, but it is what it is. So <laughs> it's me, Stacy. Let's go back, 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 back. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Where are you going to find all this product? Well, you may already have glitter in your stash. And if not, go to your local store and see if they've got it. A local independent mom and pop. If you've got one, go see about getting your glitter there. The dyes, the dyes are exclusive because they're mine, so you can only get the dyes here, but the glitter, the embossing powder, the Sizzix flakes, you may be able to find at a local store. If you do not have a local store, then shop online with a local, or with an independent retailer um, <laughs> who's online. There's lots of us out there where we're just this big and not this big. <laughs> and if you can support and put a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there and all the little independence, then we all will stay open and be able to continue to bring you the most amazing craft products where we can actually teach you about them because we use them. And, and gosh, when you go into some of the stores and it's like, hello, 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 or you go online and they've got everything under the sun. I mean, that's awesome. But then what what product what what companies do they really support who do they really believe in um what really is the best glitter out there or the best embossing powder out there well that's why your local independent stores are rock stars because they know because they use them day in and day out all right you guys it's me stacy scrapbooking made simple scrapbookingmadesimple.com see you next week bye